Today, I'm gonna be sharing six tips I've learned renovating my first property. But first, gotta head into work, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to afford these renovations. I'm done with work and at Home Depot. If you regularly watch my channel, it's probably a shock to you. Normally I'm a Lowe's guy. I basically live at Lowe's. But if you're new to my channel, you have no clue, so let me fill you in after you subscribe. Do it. So a little while back, I bought my first investment property and it's a total fixer upper. Been working on it since day one. The moment we got the keys, we got working and haven't stopped since. It's been like eight months or so since then and yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work on it made a lot of mistakes, did a lot of things wrong, but also a few things right. And along the way, I've learned a lot of lessons. And as I'm learning these lessons, I'm writing them down, writing down little things that I'm learning here and there that I could have done differently. So we still have a lot more renovations to go, so I'm sure the list will grow. But as of right now, I have six things that I've learned that I probably could have done better and that I'm learning to do in the future. And it's only fitting that I'm at Home Depot right now because number one on my list is taking trips to Home Depot and Lowe's. So if you're one of those people that watch my channel regularly, you know that I'm at Lowe's probably two to three times a day whenever we're renovating and we're in the middle of a project. So we'll start renovating on a Friday. I'll go to Lowe's like two times Friday, three times Saturday, a few times Sunday. I'm there way more than I should be. but. There's a reason for it. The first reason is I'm forgetful and sometimes I just forget stuff. The second reason is sometimes I just figure things out on the go that I need and I didn't know about at the beginning. And the third reason is because I like to take small trips. Taking big trips has just turned out to be so wasteful for me. When I take big trips, I find that I'm just so much more wasteful and I just buy things that I don't need. So when we first got the keys, we started renovating. We started scraping popcorn ceilings and we just went and got a huge pile of things. We just things that I don't even, we just really didn't even need. Everyone that was helping, I just bought stuff for and it just turned out to be so wasteful because not everyone that I bought stuff for ended up working through the duration of the project people would open things and start using things and then not even end up needing them so I just noticed when I bought a big pile of things like a fourth of it just we either lost it misplaced it didn't use it really didn't even need it and just ended up wasting money but when I started taking smaller trips I found that it was incredibly inefficient time-wise but Expense-wise, so efficient. It was amazing. I would basically break down the project into multiple little sections and run to Lowe's every time I need this little thing, this little thing, and then I only end up getting exactly what I need, and I never waste things. So it's been great financially, and it's been something that I found helps me. However, I do have an exception to the rule. As you can see back here, I bought way more things than I needed, but there was a reason for it. So if it's just me renovating or just me and Kylie, I'll buy a little more because I know I can stay organized with it and I know I don't have a bunch of other people that are gonna be opening things and not using it or going to waste. So my last project, I was doing the backsplash on my kitchen. I bought basically twice as much as what I needed just because I knew if I don't open it and I keep it organized, I can return it. So depending on the project, usually I'd recommend if you have a bunch of people working on it, take small little trips. But if it's just you, feel free to go crazy, get a big load of stuff at Home Depot or Lowe's and just make sure you remember to return it. But that brings me to point number two. Stay organized and make a game plan. And when you make a game plan, it's gonna help you stay organized. And when you stay organized, it's gonna help you save money. So my first project, like I said, it was scraping the popcorn ceilings. And the second we got the keys, we got working. We were so excited to get working. We didn't make a game plan. We didn't stop to think, what's the best way to do this? And ended up wasting a lot of money, wasting a lot of time, because we just, got the keys, went to Lowe's, bought a ton of crap, and just started going after it. Scraping the ceiling, just full scent it. And we had all of our stuff down on the ground, like we bought cleaning supplies, we bought basically everything from start to finish we bought. We had it all sitting there. And then we just start scraping the ceilings, not even thinking that we're scraping all these dirty popcorn ceilings onto our cleaning supplies that we bought to clean up the mess. So we get our mess on our cleaning supplies, end up wasting money there, 
end up wasting time just because we're so unorganized, everything's a mess. It just makes things incredibly difficult when you're not organized. So lesson number two that I learned is make a game plan from the beginning and actually write it out. And that's what I did when I did the kitchen. Even the smallest little steps that most people would just not even think to write down like, but I would literally write down every single thing just to be safe and just to make sure I don't miss any steps. And that allows me to stay more organized, keep track of the project and make sure we're doing it efficiently and saving money and not wasting anything. $118 saved, woo! All right, now on to uh, the third thing that I've learned, and this might be the most important. This one is like more for like, more for the mental side of renovating a house. And that is, finish a freaking job when you start it. I can't tell you how annoying it is to do a job, not finish it and say, yeah, I'll get to that later. And then the thing I've learned is, you never want to get to it later. My baseboards. They're haunting me. I'll show you in a second when I get home. But you know, let me just show you what I mean. So these are my baseboards, but these are also my baseboards. Ha oh, why'd I do that? Why'd I just, anyways. Half the house has baseboards that are painted and half doesn't. And after doing this, it just made me realize I could have knocked all of it out just in an extra like couple hours of painting. But I decided, you know what, let's just paint the walls, we'll do the baseboards later. It'll be no problem, we'll just do it on some random weekend. But little did I know, I would not have any motivation to do it just on any other weekend. So now that I'm not in the painting mode, I don't want to get back into it when I could be working on the kitchen, doing landscaping, there's so much more that I could be doing that I just don't want to be doing baseboards. But had I just taken the extra couple hours when I already had all hands on deck, had my friends over painting, we were all in painting clothes, all in the painting mood, just getting it going, Going. Could have knocked down an extra couple hours and wouldn't have to worry about it now. So the third thing that I've learned is definitely just finish the job while you're doing it. If you say you'll come back to it on a random weekend, you're not going to want to do it. Just knock it out. Now I tell you the fourth thing that I've learned, but I have my fantasy draft coming up in a few minutes. So I'll tell you 3.5 right now and I'll tell you four after. 3.5 is to take some time to just have fun, relax, don't worry about renovating every single day. That's what we were doing in the beginning and just got burnt out. It's just, it's a lot to do housework every single day, especially when you're doing a full-time job and trying to do YouTube and you have, it's just a lot. 3.5, take some time to have some fun, which is what I'm doing tonight with this draft party. We're gonna get so mad. We're gonna party hard. And that right there is a socially distanced party. All right, now for the fourth thing that I've learned, and that is the little things add up. Not even little things, more just like hidden expenses that you don't even think about when you're renovating a house, or at least that I didn't even think about before this process. So right here is my spreadsheet, and we've got all the expenses, every single thing I've purchased, down to the penny. Everything that I've bought that I've put into this house is on the spreadsheet. Now, if you look closely, you've got stuff like this labor expenses, basically just me buying food for friends when they help me out. $30 here, $14 there, $78 there, it adds up. Then we got additional tools like a, a new drill, a rust stripper, tons of random little things, $60. A little plug-in for the fridge, $14. An exterminator, thought it would be a little expense, didn't even think about it when buying a house and renovating it, $819. Toilet rings when we have to move the toilets that we can paint, then to put it back in, you gotta get a new toilet ring, $26. New lights for the house, $344, that adds up. Air vents, $266. AC tune-up, no one wants to work when it's 102 degrees in the house, $69. Buying food for friends when we painted the kitchen, $86. Plumbing, $167, something I didn't even take into account when we were doing this, I figured we'd do everything ourselves. But leaks happen, and there's a $167 expense right there. $221 for an electrician, and then $403 of other random miscellaneous stuff. So it adds up, like, you think it's the granite and the flooring and all that, and that is a lot too, but you add up these little expenses, that alone is, what is that? 2,598 bucks. Little costs add up. That's one thing you just don't think about. Or at least I didn't, I don't know. Maybe you think about it. That's the fourth lesson I learned. Little things add up, and there's a lot of hidden costs that you need to account for in your budget. And if you don't, it's not a fun game. But if you can plan for it, it is a fun game. <laughs> the fifth thing that I've learned is to invest in a sprayer, or rent it. 
Either way, figure out how to get your hands on a sprayer for painting the walls. Because when we painted the walls, we used rollers and little paint brushes. We painted every inch of the house, and it probably took three days. But you look up a video of those guys spraying the walls, they'll do an entire room in like 30 seconds. It's insane. Especially on cabinets and stuff that there's tons of little nooks and crannies. We sprayed our kitchen cabinets and I hand painted the cabinets in our little bar area. And I never want to roll cabinets again. That was terrible doing that. Spraying it was a thousand times better. So that's definitely another lesson that I learned. This invest in the sprayer, whether you have to spend a couple hundred dollars or you have it already or you rent it, definitely use a sprayer. Saves a ton of time. Then the last thing, and my sixth and final point, home warranty companies suck. They, yeah, they suck. It's not worth it. I'd rather just pay a plumber or electrician to come out if I need it. I got my home warranty company, and you pay them like 500 bucks at the beginning of the year, and they're supposed to cover a bunch of things. You just pay them a small little service fee for them to come out. They'll come out, and it just never seems to be as good as if you hire a real person to do it. My home warranty company charged me like $69 to have someone come out and check my AC. <laughs> he didn't do the job the first time, so he comes out a second time, gets it done that time, but then they try and charge me another $69, even though he came out, didn't do anything, and then went right home. So they charged me twice for a job that should have taken one time, and then I try and call them again, for another job a few months later, and since they charged me twice, I only paid it once, there was a hold on my account, I was blocked from having service. It was a whole mess. I'm never doing home warranty again. It's not worth it. They don't fix it right, they don't do it. It's just, nah, nah, that, I don't know. That's just my experience at least. Some people love it, but in my experience, it's not worth the money that you pay. But those are my six lessons that I've learned in the last eight or so months from renovating this property. If you've renovated properties before or if you're in the process of doing it, comment below some things that you've learned. Like and subscribe and we'll see y'all later.